Hello everybody, Dennis from Awakening in Health and I am with an elite group of people. We have another uh, another presenter, podcaster. I'll go to let you introduce yeah, yourself. Yeah, uh, Mark here, North Queensland Freedom Network. Fantastic. So uh, we are at an event here in far North Queensland called Apocalypse. Apocalypse. Nearly had a mental blank there on that. <laughs> and uh, it's a bit of a freedom rally. And uh, we got some hopefully recognizable faces here. We got Dale. I've been watching Dale's work for a while. Uh, Dale Holmes, we've got Tom Barnett, uh, who's uh, done a lot of incredible work, and we've also had Dave Armstrong, who we've interviewed as well on my channel, Awakening Health. So yeah, we're just uh, really freestyling to, uh, just now. We don't have any set format. We just wanted to let people know that we're all together, we're all collecting, we're putting our minds together to, I guess, improve society. So uh, did you want to add anything there? Now, I think uh, that's the beautiful thing about this is like, you know, how often would you see Channel 7 and Channel 10 getting together to do something like this? You know, like <laughs> that's the beautiful thing about this Freedom Network is like, you know, we're just coming from everywhere. And, you know, I, I've been amazed to, to find some more friends of Darren Dixon, who's also a friend of mine and you know it's yeah it's just amazing that how all these paths just cross eh? fantastic who's channel seven ah uh, oof i'm not too sure <laughs> I, I, i'll just have to think of when i last ate a baby i mean uh, <laughs> tens so, tens I mean, do, do, do you want to do you want to what do you reckon dale what, what do you think of the event are you are you liking it are it's you, going i didn't i didn't know what to expect to be honest so. yeah yeah, I knew you, Callum, obviously, and it's great, but um, yeah, it's good, like, good turnout, yeah. good people. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and you're, you're not going to do anything yourself? You're going to have any workshops? I know, workshops, what would okay. I do? Oh, uh, I love it, I love it, thank you, you, you do okay. No, I'm going okay. gonna, gonna to do, do, do a talk tomorrow. It's good okay. to do it second because, yeah. I actually, I, it was what, what I was kind of from the talking into, these guys have already... There's like a theme, I start seeing like a theme happening, but I love what you said about the heart too. Yeah. And it was like both years actually. So I think I'm going to run with that. Because that. That was kind of where I was going anyway, but yeah. um, and everyone kind of says it in their own, in their own yeah, way. Yeah, it's worth the so, anyway. Yeah, but so I'll, I might take a different angle with it. And, but it's really the same message. Excellent. Um, yeah. Yep. Definitely good. Yeah, I mean, I think it's great just to have everyone turn up and feel that community. We had uh, a working bee for our retreat in the Byron Hinterland. We had this lady come across from Perth and she was only there for two days. And she goes, I just had to feel what this is like. Like she just needed that feeling of community and to know that it existed so that she could then have some hope. And I think that that's what these sorts of things do. It's like there is hope. There is people trying to do stuff and there are really good people and sometimes we we forget that in our own communities because we're surrounded by numpties that we don't want to talk to. So, and I think just what I'm picking out is I, I, I kind of, I went to Mexico and um, it's good for me to actually meet the people in person because you, you have your on-screen persona. So Dale and myself were like joking before and stuff like, it's just good to see that we're, you guys are real people and we all have that same, I think, mission to, to try to help sort stuff out. Mm -hmm. Tom, you got anything to add there? Yeah, well, I mean, it's just kind of, it's one of those things where you get to a point where you realize that if the, if the, it doesn't matter how good you do for yourself, it doesn't like kind of change out there. It's really for no, for no avail. So I used to actually want to bail. I was just like, I'm getting on a yacht. I'm going to go to an island. I just want to get away from everything as far away as possible. Just surf, fish, and then just do some like hot native women somewhere. Yeah. And then I was like, <laughs> Did you say do some native women somewhere? Yeah. 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 <laughs> just like some caramel color, just beautiful skin. Just. Yeah. <laughs> but then I was like, if I do that and no one stems the tide, the tide's going to make it to that island anyway. So yeah. I'm like, well, I just get get involved because that was a way of just disconnecting from life because I didn't like it. Yeah. But that's also because I didn't know myself and I didn't I didn't know I had any role to play in it. Now I feel that I actually have a role to play. I feel like I have more value for society. So now, like Dave said in his talk, like it's exciting. It's better than being on the island. Yeah, yeah. And I, actually, I think that for me shows through is, is that you guys have that vibrancy, you have that energy. And, I, you know, when we are getting, I think, our energy parasited to such a massive extent in this modern world with all our devices and all this kind of stuff, we, we, we need people to be walking the walk, take, you know, towards the board. Yeah. Please chip in. At any time. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. one of the things that I've been getting a bit of a theme of at the moment is like, what, what was that moment that sort of woke you guys up and go, right, let's go, we've got to do something? For me, it was vaccines. Yeah. Um, so vaccines was the, the first thing that I looked into and I was a bit hesitant uh, in looking into it because I didn't want to get the answer that I knew might come. 
uh, and then child trafficking. So, so the whole thing for me is that I came from all these dark places mm. of like researching and looking at this and then, you know, my realisation as an atheist at the time was if there's all this dark, there must also be this light. Yeah. And then so then trying to find what that light is, you know, to balance what I'd learn about the world mm. was really important. So, and then once you focus more on that light, like when you feel what's good and you keep focusing on that, then your reality starts to change. And that's really hard for people to, to realize is the more you let go of that stuff and open up to this other stuff, uh, that's what you're going to create. And that's the world that, you know, and that's why, you know, when we're talking here, it's exciting because, you know, you're starting to feel that and you're like, haven't felt that before. And, and you know, trying to help people on that journey, sometimes you've got to go through, it's like a birthing process, right? It's like, you know, a birth, they don't know what they're going to come out to but there's this big struggle as they come out and then the world's very different. That's what I, I think we're all going through is our own birth. We're going through what is that world outside of that and I don't think we fully yet understand what it could be, um, but it's exciting. Is that really theme between all of you guys, um, especially when you were at top, and is that theme of, of letting go and, uh, and almost having strength in not resisting? As a, you know, almost like, I guess, the metaphor of the, the blues bending in the storm. Um, and then allowing that good energy to come towards it. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Yep. I mean, just to like, for your question, I'm like, I, I was just on that way, but the main awakening thing was when I was real sick. <laughs> yeah, I just knew it from when I was a kid. I just like couldn't yeah. handle it. I couldn't handle my family. I couldn't handle school. Like, I, just knew, I just knew everything was bent. But it's also because I had, I don't know, if I, you know, whatever reason I ended up with some like weird shit, but uh, I just I always thought differently, you know, like yeah. just, just things don't add up and if they don't add up, I like say it. So, mm -hmm. and then that causes trouble. But then that was only because I didn't know how to, uh, how to do that in a way that was productive. I was just like against everything. Mm -hmm. But then when I lost my health and lost like all my life, well, that's when I, my like awakening was through that as far as what role I had in all of that before. Like I already knew everything was backwards and bent, but, mm -hmm. but it was when I lost my health, that's when it clicked in that I had responsibility. Yeah. But the other aspect though is that we're still all on that journey as well. Mm. Like yeah, we may have started a little bit earlier than some and therefore we can share what we've learned, but we're still on the same journey. It's like we're not higher or, or better than anyone else. Mm. It's just like, hey, this is what we've found so far. Hopefully this helps you get there a bit quicker than it did me. We don't have to play autistic yeah, boy for 20 is, years. There is yeah. a hierarchy of the awakening. I'm going to give you a little bit of a plug there because uh, Dave was saying to me just before that uh, he was uncomfortable being on the stage because he didn't like that power imbalance of being up there. Um, but as again, so, like I kind of sometimes have to do a bit of public speaking. So for me, it's, it's not about have being on top of somebody, but it's about giving in order to have the people who have attended to be entertained. Mm -hmm. But I do like the way that you were kind of specific and acknowledging that you, you're not better than us, you're, you're, you're the same. Yeah. And I think that's really important. Yeah, I think it takes, um, cause it's funny, cause some people love being, like they want to be the center of attention. Yeah. Whereas yeah. I'm just like, if you want me to say something, will, but I've got no like desire to get up and say something. Mm -hmm. But there's also, I realized there was this aspect of humility that I didn't have where I was actively avoiding it. Yeah, yeah. Because part of it is like, being willing to be, if, if people want it, being willing to stand there and be seen as opposed to like, oh no, I just, I'll just sit off to the side, I don't really need to be on a stage or whatever. It's kind of like, that's actually, it takes humility to be willing to stand there and go, all right, well, you can look at me and shit. And then- uh, I don't feel like me, but every time I hear my voice back, I'm like, oh, do I really sound yeah, like yeah. that? Oh, <laughs> Never listen back. Is too no, big. No, no, yeah. just, oh, no, it's like, like, that's why I stopped big. editing our <laughs> podcast. And I'm like, I can't, I can't just sit there watching us, like me, talking to like, oh, you just sound like a mother. I've had to, I've had I'm to do that and I'm not, I'm not posting this shit on that. So <laughs> I ended up just posting our last podcast. I edited it for a bit and then the rest of it's just Dale's face. I just didn't cut to my face. Have you ever won so? Do you know what? I've actually like, going back to edit one and I'm like that's not me talking yeah, yeah. and I, I can tell it's when like something switches in me it's when I start talking like deeper yeah. stuff yeah, yeah. And it's inspired like, right oh, yeah. like, no, I, can, I can just say it's coming from like it's like you're talking about before it's coming from the essence yeah. and it's weird watching yourself and I'm like that's not me and I'm like 
I'm listening. I'm going. I'm learning something for myself. I might didn't know that information. Yeah, but, um, but that is when you give you give it freely, it then can flow through you, sort of that's thing. Hard and, intuition. And that's, oh yeah. When you, when um I forget what the Ward was saying about plagiarism, and then uh, Mike said, "Oh, would you care if you were plagiarized?" Because like I I just see it as like people say that about us with what we do on the platform. They're like. But what if other people get your material and then try to copy it? We're like, no one can copy it. It's yeah. kind of like it's a hammer. It's like a hammer's a hammer. I don't care if anyone knows what a hammer is. Like, unless you know what to do with it, you can't copy what some. So I'm not, I don't really care about my my ideas because they're not mine anyway. So it's like the more people that know them, I reckon, the better. Do, do you not think as well that, that uh, in relation to, especially some of the stuff, actually all three of you that talk about, we know the information, but it's different if the information is coming from Tom or from Dale or from Dave. There's, um, I don't know, like I, because I, I do the whole health talk. I mean, I, I try and I deal a lot with depression and anxiety. And people can look that information up. It's not difficult to fix yeah. depression and anxiety. It's actually straightforward. But they, there's, there's a more of, a, I guess, a bonding with somebody if they're getting it from a source, like you know Dave's energy or Tom's energy or yeah. Dale's. I think there's, relevant? I think there's two sides of so, because you can, you can have the best information ever and have a bullshit monotone pre presentation it's, yeah. it's still truth yeah it doesn't matter like uh like truth truth doesn't matter how it's said but i think like i think you spoke about this before too there's like a people they can see authenticity right they can see it if like yeah, if yeah. someone's a bullshit artist and that's what right? i like about you I mean, but so it's, it's, it's more so, obvious yeah. it's i think that that energy is becoming more obvious yeah. what's We've what's real and what's discern, not right yeah we're all learning to discern because previously, previously it was about who could present the best and often the person who could present the best was the person who shouldn't be presenting. Yeah, had the yeah. least skills and And shit. it's like the people who are, I see that are coming through that are authentic are actually going, hey, I wouldn't really want to be in that position, but hey, I'll do it because I think I've been called to do this yeah. and I'll do my part. But I, I'm, I'm actually quite happy to sit at home with the kids and do none of this. And, you know, Cal Washington, who I work with at Empower, he's like, I just want to play the drums. Yeah. You know, but there's there's this part that's kind of more important than all of that. Yeah. And that's like, okay, yeah, I'm happy to do that part. But, you know, and then it's the ego and dropping all of that. So yeah. if you're following someone, try to look for that. Are they holding on to the ego? Are they doing it for these other reasons? Yeah. And they're probably not the right person to follow. Yeah, yeah I, agree. I agree. And again, that's that's a very strong thing that comes through for me is that is is that authenticity. I mean, Dale comes out with some far out stuff. Holy shit! But <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, don't, I don't necessarily align at all. But all it is, I've never, I've, I've never ever at the end of the camera looked at looked at Dale and thought this guy's just banging it on. He, you know, I've just thought, how much that guy's just speaking from his heart. He's, he's um, you know, freestyling and uh, it's as authentic as hell, you know? So, uh, yeah, kudos to you. That's I think you guys by whale dreaming now, don't you? That's you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I started to get known as a whale guy and then some lady oh, and she time. like contacted me and she like, she wouldn't give me a name for a while. I was like, whale lady. <laughs> she got my phone as whale lady. Man, it's like, this was awesome yeah. stuff. <laughs> 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 but you're like you're the not the virus dude, right? Yeah. <laughs> what about that bull guy? What are you gonna jump in with, Dave? Yeah, I'm doing a heart virus boy and whale oh, man. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. I think oh, other man. people have to tell you what you you think. What's your, is. What's your forte? Is yeah. your skill? Yeah. Okay, good. What about um, you? Oh shoot, oh, I'm a bit lost for words to be honest. Like <laughs> it's. I'm, um, I'm enjoying like th this is why I like to sometimes do these kind of interviews because. Um, a lot of times people are just, oh, tell me about this, tell me about this. I'm more interested in seeing what you guys are like. Yeah, like, who, who, like you see the, the face in front of the screen, I want to hear, who, who the hell are you? Like I looked at it and said, I want to go to an island and you know, make love to tropical beauty, beauties there. I mean, that's great. That's what I want to do. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> you want to find out who, who am I? <laughs> who, who are you? I don't know. What's, go what's going on? I'm like, I don't, I, I don't know. I have no like, I have no real like goals or ambitions or anything at the moment. It's like, that's, that's good. No, it's like, yeah, nice. It's a nice place to be. I'm kind of, um, kind of like put myself in a position to, like, I don't know, to like go, like go by intuition. Yeah. I, I, is um, it happening? Like, what, what are you? Are you in just? 
sitting and allowing the energy to collect. I don't know. It's, like, it's, a, it's a bit of an arrogant thing to say to because I tell me brother this, and he's like, he goes, oh, yeah, you're doing it pretty easy. Like you haven't got four kids and a fucking house and like. So I don't know. It's different for everyone. Should, you, but... should we do it hard? Like uh, and again, I've, I've had a few. Like I um, worked probably because I was working the health service, so yeah. that, that option is not open to me. Um, financially, it's it's not the best, but I could have spent the last three years working in that system doing stuff that's that's uh, killing people uh, which you know I've, I've, I've had a very stress free three years do you know I think it is too because they are wait because you said you, you're basically like how many adventures you've been on and, and you brought up adventure on your talk right? yeah I think you might have been from it. But that's like, because that's the initial hero's journey. Yeah. That's yeah, why you take yeah. the, fir the first plunge is the adventure. Like, that's, yeah. I think people are going to remember that. Like, yeah. you kind of, that, I think that's, I mean, you take away like, all the philosophical stuff and trying to break down why we're here. I reckon that's one of the core cool bits. It's like, and people have forgotten the adventure. Yeah. And then when you get what? caught up in the rah, rah, rah of, fighting all the system and stuff you like you forgot that core reason why you came in it's the initiation as well we've lost our initiation rituals i mean you know people are missing out and that's part of the hero's journey as well but don't, you, don't you think now is like this time it's going to be written in books you know years to come they're going to talk about this very time whether you know there's another bible or whatever who knows but they're going to talk about this and it's like hey, you know you're going to talk to your kids about this stuff and it's like, were you part of that, or did you sit back and just watch it happen? Very important. And that's the that's the thing. It's like it's an opportunity to be a part of creating what this world, you know, what we want to see, and pass it on to our kids better than what maybe we received it or whatever. But that's exciting, and that's an opportunity. But a lot of people sit back and go, oh no, I, you know, I'll just watch someone else do it. Yeah. And it's like, no, no, get involved. And that's, you know, it's it doesn't really matter what, you've got this value. And so many people think they don't have the value. Yes. It's like, oh, I'm just this, I'm just the housewife, I just do this. And it's like, hang on, some of those skills are hugely important. Yeah. Don't, don't bring yourself down and think that that's not important. And then how can you also utilize the skills you've got yeah. to help others and to create something else? So. Yeah, I think it's you know an exciting time, but I want other people to go, what are my skills? Yep. How can I help create yep. something better? And then once you start thinking about that, because you're trying to create it for others, that's when you start to get in the flow and, and you know you get energy from it. You know, like you feel like, oh, hang on, there's something here and you keep leaning into it. Yep. And that's what a lot of people I think are fearful of doing but all the uh, energy, the abundance, the, the blessings all come from when you do that. So it's a little bit of an adventure, a little and, bit and of a risk. There seems to be no sentiment with, you know, a lot of people I follow, including yourselves, of I am the leader, follow me. It's like, no, I'm, I'm, I, I've, I've done things sooner than some other people and I've got information. But you're not putting yourself out there as knowing everything, being everything oh, that's to everybody. Dangerous. That's dangerous. Absolutely, yeah. Super yeah. dangerous, yeah. So the, God, the God complex, yeah. Yeah, yeah, or the Messiah. But, but what I'd say, like the analogy I like to use is rock climbing. If you've ever rock climbed, you know, you don't know where your next handhold is until you put that, that foot up and you have a look and then you go, there's the next step. So you don't need to know all the answers. You just need to take that next step up. And then often, the, you know, what you're meant to be doing will appear, but people will forget to take that step. And, yeah. and that's really the important oh, thing. Just, afraid. just go it's go scary. forward and see what happens. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. If I can just chuck me two bobs in on that one, man. Like, I, I kind of feel like it's we're all just a piece of this fucking puzzle, you know. But there's a lot more pieces that still need to come into play, you know. We're, we're hopefully inspiring other pieces to sort of come to the table and add their piece, you know, piece to the board, you know. I don't know what this picture looks like, but it's looking pretty fucking cool so far. And, you know, hopefully people watching this are going, wow, you know, I'm not a podcaster, I don't have video or whatnot, but hey, I like to research things, you know, the way Darren goes through. The, the, the law stuff and whatnot, you know, and you know, you, you're, you're coming from that nursing sort of thing, so that's your skill. I come from um, mainstream media, so stepping into you know, alternative media was just a logical step for me. You know, I was like, well, somebody's got to report this stuff because it's not being done, you know, especially, well, at least not where we were in Townsville, you know, but yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested in your take on that discussion. Well, you know, it's. I mean, for, are, we, are you talking more about the people that like feel stuck or 
Whatever, whatever you want. Like what, what, how you see yourself, like what you have, you have message, whatever you want. Or how I see myself. Yeah. I don't know, like about six foot six. <laughs> <laughs> you know, full head of hair, you know, just like. Well, people say they thought you were smaller because that was the first thing that I, I think the first thing I saw, I go, you look a bit smaller than I thought. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's, most like, it's like Tom Cruise or something. Like everyone thinks he's he's like a midget. He's in like Mission Impossible and that. He's like looks like he's normal height, <laughs> but he's not. So, so you want me to get the platform shoes next time? I yeah, I might, might need there? that. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm, I'm going to take it in. I don't know why I feel compelled to ask this. So I'm going to take it in a very different direction. Tartaria. How are they going to do the same? I think the, I think we were reset. I honestly, I think we were reset. There's too many big buildings around the place. I think they've done it before. Am I a lunatic? Um, I mean, yeah. you know, let me, let me get off. <laughs> I, I, I do that anyway. What, what are your thoughts? You know, have we been recently reset? Have they done this before? Yeah, the, this is a repeat in history, I believe. Yeah. That we're, we've been in a repeat, but I think that we're actually at the last repeat. Okay. I, I think that we've actually got the opportunity to change it and get out of this cycle. I do think history has repeated, yeah. but I do think this is different. I think I think we're at those end times, if you want biblical, you know, the revelation sort of stuff. I think we're at that point and that, you know, we have an opportunity right now to decide our fate. Yeah. And it's, you know, are we going to take those steps forward or is it going to be another repeat? Maybe it, maybe if we don't, it does repeat. Yeah, Tom? Yeah, I don't know. I know that it goes in cycles, but I think that's uh, up to individuals. I think the collective goes through a samsara cycle, but yeah. then other people, they figure out what this is. So for me, what it comes down to is not having a duality yeah. or a polarity. So like how much, even if you're like chasing light, like I'm a light seeker or like a whatever, if you're chasing one or the other or you're trying, you push, you're, you're kind of like creating that, people call it a hologram or whatever, you're kind of creating that. There's a space in between where like, the best way I could describe it is just to use a phrase like it doesn't matter. But it doesn't mean being like non participatory yes. It just means like yeah, it doesn't matter. matter. Yeah, it, does, it doesn't yeah. matter, right? Yeah. So then in that point, there's an energy that's neither for or against. It's neither yin nor yang, positive, negative. And then that's the place that's outside of that other structure that keeps getting recycled and reset. And um, that's where I think, uh, but that's a choice, that's the thing. And not many people would even understand that. Yeah. So then fewer people would even get there. Yeah. And so, even then understanding it and then and in embodying it or feeling it is a different thing again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But that's like the vote, right? The vote that just happened with the referendum. It's like, are you, you know, are you this, are you that? It's all yeah. about division. Yeah. And people go, you know, you know, are you happy with it? And I'm like, I actually don't care. Yeah. Like if it went this way or went this way, I actually don't care because I'm happy for it to go either way. Yeah. And that's like giving that thing. It's like if it was meant to go that way, yeah. great, we'll deal with it. You know, whatever's going to come and maybe that'll help people more on the journey or... So it's kind of saying like there's a bigger picture at stake and, you know, when we buy into this d divisive sort of or, or polarity yeah. sort of stuff, that's kind of where the trap is. Yeah. And, and I think, that the, the, you know, the more that you realise that what they sell you, that reality, if, if you don't take that in, then it doesn't become your reality. Yeah, and you're less affected. Dale, yeah. what do you got? Um, oh, I, I, I want to go back to oh, the I, well, I think it's a blueprint. It, it tells me it's fine. Like all these patterns and cycles, it tells me that's finite. You're dealing with finite. So people accept it. And it's like, well, nothing's finite, right? Maybe, maybe they're, we're, we're in a finite structure, a finite realm. It's like, I'm kind of leading towards, right? Or part of it. So we're, we're in a hologram? But, well, we, yeah, well, yeah. That, but it's not just a hologram, yeah. right? It's like a hologram, that's just the building blocks of the, of the structure. It's not just a hologram. But um, I think it's, like, if it goes like, you've seen that scene in The Matrix again. Always going, I mean, when he, he meets the architect and he tells him, he goes, you've got two choices. He said, that's, we rule you by choice. And it's like the same with the referendum. Yeah. And like the anomaly doesn't have to play any choice. So it's like to be the anomaly and break it is yeah. like you go your own way. Yeah. So it will offer you both choices. And I think that a lot of, even like with revelation stuff, so I see that as like a patterned blueprint and people accept that. They accept we're in revelation. Well, we don't have to be. That's a that's a fo one finite outcome. But we accept that to be the outcome. So if enough people are the anomaly, that doesn't have to be the outcome. It can be, it can be any fucking outcome. It's infinite. So it's if you believe in a finite, then you get you get the choices within the finite. So it's almost like not giving a shit. 
is it? I, I just, yeah. just step in inside of those two, two polarities. Yeah. Would that be a way of describing it? Did you see that meme where the dwarf is like, you gotta take the red or the blue, and then he's like, wait, did you just take both pills? And it's a tweaky guy who's like. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen that. What? That's gonna be the best. <laughs> I haven't seen that. <laughs> I'll send it to you. And he looks like he's tweaky. Yeah. That's a lot of it. Yeah, he's yeah, like, like a man that's just too funny. <laughs> but you know, you know, actually, like in the Matrix, he's called the architect. Yeah, it's called the architect. No, in the third one, he goes and he's a grey man with. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But like, say, in Freemasonry, it's the grand architect. Yeah. And the Archon, the, the Gnostics called the, the great architect. Okay. So it's all like, they always use that. Uh, it's, it's just common. But that's a theory about how Freemasons got their name is like there was a big reset and they just like came back in and they're like, fuck, there's all these buildings in that. Let's just take them, they're free, Freemasonry. Actually, so the last one in Tartu, I think, I think the buildings are residue. Anyway, there's a big story behind that. So you know the Mandela effect. Yeah. So you know when you have residue yeah yeah so the residue will be the original anyway. or, or aspects of the original that aren't yeah, in yeah, you know what I mean? before yeah okay the so i th yeah. i think that whether that's based reality or whatever i think that, that they're, they're just residue so it's yeah. memory of the residue of a frequency of something else <coughs> that's interesting um i posted something about the monopoly man monocle or no monocle Fuck, he had a monocle he had a monocle didn't he yeah. he yeah. absolutely that's the way i remember yeah absolutely yeah so now he doesn't have a monocle um <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, did you? No. You're okay. from the other. Okay. 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 He's probably a lizard. Yeah. Oh, this is how we. When I first got that, someone goes, check the knob and named on the harmonic. I should shut the fuck up. He's got a monocle. That's <laughs> all I know that he has. I remember. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I honestly remember yeah. having yeah. monocle. Like, I, I, until you pointed that out, then I'm like, I, I used no. My girls, you know, I was watching them having a monocle. So there's something about this. Okay, hold on. But the Tartarian buildings, Mandela effect residue, that's good. Yeah. That's, that's I, I want to know what you think though, man, because you asked the question. I, I, do, you, do you reckon there's Tartaria things? Yeah, yeah legit, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. They're, they're all these uniform buildings all across the, the nation. And if you look at some of Max's, Max Egan stuff, and, I mean, you read some, like I've got books and so many different things, but you know, they were uncovering yeah. these, old, these old cities in the, in the Nevada desert and they used to use them as movie props. And you got the World Fairs and yeah, that's uh, yeah, we've, we've been oh, we've been nice. So, do you know, had, do you know, you are a non, the dude? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, he yeah. made that five in the eight hour, like what, what, um, what on earth happened? Okay, and I that was all about the yeah. lost histories and that. Yeah, okay, so basically, so then the guys that made that, then they came out and they tried to say that whatever they were saying before was they go, oh, we got it wrong and it's not like that. The guys who made it, so. yeah, they, they went on Crow Triple Seven and did that. And I was just like, there was something in the way they were saying it, I was like, I don't really believe it. Yeah, old Benjamin made a good point though, he said. The idea of this Tartaria stuff is that there's all this ornate, beautiful stuff, yeah. and the premise is that that's lost and that's old, and we don't have that yeah. anymore, and we can't do that anymore, which means it's a learned helplessness. Yeah. But the reality is, is that it's not real. It's not really lost. So there's part of the Tartarian narrative that I think does include some learned helplessness. It's like. Because TikTok was pushing it real hard. TikTok yeah, was allowing yeah. Tartaria yeah. stuff to be like, they were pushing yeah. it. So then it's like, why? Why would TikTok push that sort of stuff? So I think that there's definitely elements of truth in there. I just don't believe 100% the narrative that's put through in all the, the popular yeah. YouTube and TikTok videos. They're tied onto it. Yeah. But you know the why they always say if something's nowhere and then it's everywhere? Yeah. And it's like the trans stuff. That was nowhere and then it was everywhere. Could Flat that, Earth was nowhere 2014. It was everywhere. Yeah, Could that be disclosure so, as well though? Yeah, it, can, they, yeah. it can be letting go of an old paradigm to make way for they know that there's another one coming. They have to like just fucking shed stuff off and then go to the next for sure. Yeah. I don't, I don't I not believe it. I think it's that thing of like, it doesn't matter. Yes. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, and talk about that. It's like, it's okay. It's an chat, isn't it? Like, like, it could be. You know, it could yeah. be. And just if you get to that position, it's 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 click, click. Ooh. Yeah, like, what, what yeah. is it? Well, it doesn't really matter if the world's flat or, it, or it's a globe. It doesn't really matter because from what I'm seeing, it's just this. You know what I mean? Like, I follow the theme, okay? So feel free to chip in at any stage. Yeah, okay? look, I'm, I'm inclined to agree with the it doesn't really matter concept, but 
I find it fascinating. Graham Hancock's work is yeah. really knocked down. And I, 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 as soon as I heard he, what he was doing, I was like, that actually sounds really feasible. I think what Graham Hancock's presenting is pro possibly tied in with the concept of Tartaria. But again, like what you were saying, mate, like the, I don't know that the whole Tartarian story is completely true, but I do find that 15th century map that that Spanish uh, sailor drew and you see Australia with the landmass connected to Tasmania. It's like, well, how did he do that 500 years ago if we were told, or apparently, the, well, the history we're told? Because I can make it, I can draw a fucking thing now and then backdate it to the 1500s, you know what I mean? So you, you don't. Skeptic, Tom. You know, well, you that's it. He did say skeptic. that he, um, he copied that map from somewhere else. Yeah. So somebody yeah. somewhere <laughs> along the lines drew that map with Australia in it. Yeah. You know, I, I that's really fascinating. That happens. I just don't, I just like, I'm careful with like going like that's definitely the way or that's the only way. I think it that's does. The division, right? Yeah, that's it. Just like, are you this or are you that? Are you this or are you that? Yeah. I think that's it does. I'm on the other side. I'm trying to create division here. That's all. Yeah. Uh, I think yes. that, yeah. I think, for example, flat earth, I like, think it matters because if it's what, like, NASA tells you, it's pretty disempowering. But if we are, the, if we are under a firm and protected, and if we are the center of everything, then that's super empowering. So I think, like, it's a base resonance of what it, but whether, like, arguing semantics about, like, that's not relevant. Because it's like, if that, if that affects how we treat each other, then it's no good. Yeah. So it's like, it, it's probably better if everyone believes the Earth's round, if we all treat each other better. Like that, that's a better thing than everyone knowing that it's like not that, it's a lie and they're all fighting each other. I mean, whether it's flat or round, like, does that mean it's any less protected? Um, well, based on narratives, yeah, because then we're told that like we can be hit by comets and we can get sea level rises and we can get Absolutely. like dinosaurs and shit. So it's kind of like, yeah, so it kind of, unless you're told that you are protected, even if it is that, but yeah, I just think it's like a, I think it matters because of the lies, but at the end of the day, like not if we're treating each other. I mean, I'm inclined to, I mean, even if you look at it as the round yeah. thing and you brought in the asteroids the construct, is that not considered perhaps the wrath of God? Yeah, maybe, but I think that comes from women. Oh. <laughs> wow. I don't know about how, how we're going to go getting those ladies on the islands with that kind of attitude. Just just a thought. Just like I just mean, like, if I do something stupid, I don't need an asteroid to hit me. One of the women around me will tell me I'm doing something wrong. Good back so. track there, Tom. That's good recovery, man. Yeah, what's well, recovery. Yeah. No, that's what I mean. That's <laughs> Aliens. Yes or no? No. That? Well, it depends what you mean. <laughs> yeah, it depends what you mean. Yeah. What do you mean by aliens? Green men who are going to come in a, spa in a spaceship. But, uh, yeah, and there's like, really there's like forms that are not human that are interacting with yeah. you. Interdimensional or aliens? Yeah. yeah. I think it's spiritual yeah. things. I, I think that they, they form things that maybe look like aliens, but I don't think it's little green men. Men no. that are on Mars that have come to visit in there. They're already here like in human form, as far as I can tell. But also, I think there's two interesting, the two words, alien and extraterrestrial. So extraterrestrial meaning more land. So therefore, like outside of the ice wall, if that's the, the way that it works, there's other lands. But then they don't obviously like trek across. They come through portals and whatever to our lands. And then well, that, that's what I reckon. And the other word is alien. And alien to me is two words. It's it's a meaning R and then lean and lean in a commercial sense that's what it spells if you, if you take the A and separate it spells A lean like a commercial lean so that's what I like when you hear about things like gold and all that being the main thing that quote unquote aliens are after because for their craft and it's the only uh, it's the only metal that like doesn't change shape and uh, doesn't lose atomic mass and all that it's like well then what's really in, what's really being traded and what's in debt because we also have more atomic gold in our system so uh, I just think that it's got something to do with that but as far as like being green guys I just think that the whole alien thing is trying to depict what's already here amongst like I just think as human beings we're all way different from each other like you see in some people's eyes you just like and there's structure in that you're just like way different to other people so I don't know all that stuff they're just theories I, I've been Again, if you go back to finite or like, if, if, like, if is this the only bipedal form of that smart that exists in the universe, I think absolutely not. Like there's, there, if it's the infinite, yeah, there's infinite possibilities, right? And like, I think, yeah, we just said it, we're at a frequency band. I think yeah. there's all fucking sorts of beings. But, but if you, if you go to like, sorry? Yeah, like, yeah, I, I think there's, I think there's enough evidence out there to show there's, 
whatever you want to call it, um, demonic possession or fucking entity fucking, what do they call it? Entity attachments, or whatever, you know, there is other consciousness uh, inhabiting and in interacting with this realm, yeah. if you want to call it an alien. So, if, if you go back to, to quantum physics and, and the observer effect, collapsing energy, we can all be just frequency, so it's open for the whole lot of Aliens, rounds, flats, it's all, and maybe it's, it's, a, it's a reflection of our consciousness. Find out one day. Possibly. Possibly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Tom, Tom knows he's not telling us, probably. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what I mean? It's, that's, at the end of the day, that's, that's, that's what I understand it is anyway. So yeah. it's just kind of like, and I'm, I think that the realm that we're in has a huge, is influenced usually by us. Yeah. Like, what do we think it is? Like, what's the construct of our mind? And what does that create as a holographic yeah, yeah. Uh, externalization of what's, it could be something way different than what we even experience right. now. So it's like, yeah. who knows? It's, it's exciting either way. It's interesting. What you got? I kind of formulated a theory quite a while ago that if we grab all these religions, all these crazy ideas, and we treat it like we're panning for gold, you know, sooner there's got to be a little bit of gold in each part. I think I think there's something in everything, and I guess the the, the real adventure is finding out, and that's the you know, it's the seeking of the knowledge. You know, if you're not willing to seek the knowledge, then you're not going to get very far anyway. But if you're willing to seek and you're willing to accept the truth as you see it, you know, without a preconceived conception when you go into it then i reckon we can figure it I mean, out like you only know what you know yeah i was i used to be very arrogant like when I, i'm like i've, I've got this. used to be <laughs> <laughs> yeah no i feel i've it back still I'm still, I'm still a little bit but like yeah like I've, i'm like i know this and then like a year later you, you know more of it like you still knew what you knew but then i oh, know this and then five years down the track you're just peeling different layers of the same thing and it's that's why I like like tribal stories or yeah. even, like, even like biblical yeah, stories. They're like, real simple. Yeah. Even like what you were talking today with the breath stuff, right? You can go all complicated types of breath work and everything. And then you bring it back to the most simplest one. And then all the expansions are actually just different layers of the original like simple story, right? And I think that's what the religions are, right? They picked up in this thing and then there's all different expansions and layers that are true within themselves. But then, like, they fight over different aspects of different layers of the same thing. But they knew a lot, right? Those yeah. old people, they, they knew a lot. More yeah. than us. Like they're, they're, but but yeah. no, people, no one would follow anything if it didn't have truth in it. And, yeah. and, I, and I think a lot of them, it's, it's been designed that way because it's it's triggering, you know, these archetypes and stuff within us. They they know and they can twist it all. But if it didn't have truth in there, there'd be no, That's and there's no sales pitch if there's no truth in it. So there has to be truth in all of it. She's on her own. There we go. Good, good chat. Um, got anything else? Oh, yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> I, I'm pretty happy with that myself. Oh, well. You know, we, we, people have got that sort of attention span sort of yeah. realm. We don't want to push it too far. I think it's been really good to catch up and, I'm you know, say, guys, wow. Thank you for coming to my, uh, my backyard and putting on a bit of a show and introducing sure. yourselves and, yeah, I'm liking your talk so far. So, thanks. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Cheers, guys.